Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hello, my beloveds. I am so happy to be with you today. I am in such abundance. I look around and it's like springtime and the trees are blossoming here in Arizona. If you think of Arizona like an ugly dry desert, you're kind of right. But also if you get into Arizona agriculture a little bit, you will realize that there's actually a ton of beauty here and blossoming and succulents and really cool desert flowering plants. So it's been fun to witness those as the peak of spring is passing us and we're starting to wind into summer here. Um, I wanted to start today by reading a quote that I, well, it's like a basically a series of Instagram uh, swipey little posts And I created them and I haven't released them yet. I probably will in the future, you know, in the next few weeks or so, but I I wanted to share them here because I loved them so much and I just felt them coming through today. I was going to share a podcast review, but that didn't feel right. So I felt like the universe really wants us to hear these words today. When you feel ashamed and not enough is when you need community the most. You are worthy of community in motherhood. You are worthy of community despite your fears and nervousness. You are worthy of community even if you don't share much. You are worthy of being heard. You are worthy of taking up space. In my 12-week group, I and we will hear you. We will listen to you and we will cry with you. We will hold space with you and for you. And then it talks about joining my next group coaching program, but I just wanted you to feel the worthiness that you have and that you hold for community, whether it's my community, whether it's, you know, the podcast or my, one of my programs, or whether it is a church community or a mom group play date community, wherever you are and however inadequate you might feel or however much self-judgment you feel like you're steeped in right now, you still are worthy of taking up space, having a voice that is heard and seen, and to be in community. And when you are born into the sisterhood of motherhood, it is like your worthiness is just magnetic. And I want you to own into that today. Step into that. And if you wish you had more community, create it. Come join us if you want to be in my community of moms who are working on mother wounds, etc. I want you to know that when you are super independent, and I I don't want to, I'm careful with delivering this to you because I don't want to create things that aren't real for you. So take this as you will. But I know for me, an overemphasis on independence was a trauma response from emotional neglect growing up. And I didn't real I didn't put those two together. And so I became a mom and I prided myself on not needing help and not asking for help and overgiving because that's what I was born into. I was born into like a nurturing role for my mom and just for my just, that's just kind of who I was. And I, I want you to notice if that's you and reclaim the space that you take and could give and bring to a community. We are hardwired for community. All right. So it's part of our attachment. It's part of how we interconnect as human beings. And I don't want you to live your life and your motherhood, especially while your kids are so young and it's so difficult at times and draining, missing out on community. And it's an open invitation. If you want to join us, it's $1,800. You can make monthly payments. We meet for 12 weeks. It's a beautiful investment of time and money 
and just commitment to yourself energetically, showing to the universe that you do believe that you are worthy of community. And I truly have noticed that being in my community, I can only speak for mine, right, is is oftentimes just the beginning for many women to living a life free of their trauma, not free of it as in it doesn't exist, but free of living as a victim to your own trauma without even sometimes realizing it and really claiming your liberty, your freedom and your worthiness and your love and your peace and your joy. And this isn't too good to be true. When I say these words, it's with total feeling. I have witnessed women come out of the trenches and come out of a dark, lonely place and into this light and fullness. And it's not necessarily easy, but with other women around you doing it at the same time, it is doable, sustainable, and actual. It's real. It's possible. All right. I wanted to kick off with that. For those of you who don't know me, hey, my name's Lizzie Langston. I've got three kids, two boys and a girl, and a German short-haired pointer named Otto, and he is so cute, and he was in my office, but he was on the leather couch, and he was making it squeak a lot because he was moving a lot, looking at birds outside, so I had to kick him out, but just know he's here's here with us in spirit. He's with his dad right now <laughs> outside of my office. So whoever needed to hear the community comments, that was for you, my love. You are worthy of community. All right. So I have a really kind of a fun episode. I am by no means sort of like a, like a, a nervous system specialist or complete expert. That being said, I come from a lot of wounds and trauma and in my adult years, specifically my late twenties, early thirties, I have basically been confronted by childhood trauma that has risen to the surface in the form of acne, in the form of depression, anxiety, in the form of chronic pain, in the form of food allergies. (laughs) It's been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, Yeah, it's been a lot, both postpartum and not so postpartum. Uh, And uh, my most recent challenge with depression and anxiety was January to April of 2022, which is just this year. And I had to take a month off in business. But each time I go through something like that, I reclaim my authenticity and who I really am, who I maybe didn't even feel like I could reach this part of me since the day I was born. And so um, depending on the family that you've survived and the trauma that you've been through, um, that could be you too. So today's episode is all about the way that the people in one household tend to nervous system sync. And I want to share some personal experiences with this um, as sort of a way to get your mind thinking about this because it is so real and fascinating. And um, so, yeah, I just want to introduce this to you and hopefully it will create solutions for you and not problems, but solutions and eye-opening aha moments potentially with your children's behavior, with your dynamics, with your partner, um, and even in your own nervous system. So let's dive in. This whole idea of nervous system syncing, which I have since come to find out exists in research and in the world of trauma, what do they call it? Traumology? (laughs) Traumatology, I think is what they call it. (laughs) Um, which I have been delving more and more into as a, as a mental health provider and professional and as a, just a healing woman. But, um, it all started for me with my children's bedtime. And I noticed that on the nights that I was really, really done, like everybody just get in your damn beds. I'm so done. You know, those kind of nights where you're like, seriously, I'm done. Don't talk to me. Don't come out of your room. Like we're going to have big consequences if you do, because I'm just so done. The nights that I was like that, I noticed that the more done I was, the more they wanted to cuddle with me, the more they would sneak out of bed and be mischievous. And it was like clockwork to the point where I noticed this pattern. And while it was frustrating, I started to play an experiment with it. And I started to, with my, whatever my emotional capacity and availability was at the end of the day, I started to channel energy into being emotionally available for them at the end of the day, specifically during the bedtime routine. So let's say if my kids go to bed at eight o'clock, 
Around 6.30 or so, I started to give them more of my undivided attention. I would specifically, and still do at times as I'm able, um, off-put any sort of business um, to-dos or any screen time uh, like or Instagram surfing. I would try to really put those things aside and be ultra-present with my kids. Now, there still are occasions where... I, I'm not able to do that or I delegate bedtime more to my husband. So I'm not trying to set a standard here that, um, just to make you feel bad or guilty or anything. Again, keyword here is to the extent that I was available and able to, I would, yeah, start making it a point to be available and regulate myself, um, as deeply as possible. And I'm going to explain what regulating and dysregulating is in the nervous system. And what I noticed is that the more available I was and the more present I was with my kids, the more uh, quickly they would de-escalate into bedtime and to sleep. If you think about it, sleep's kind of vulnerable for a little child and for frankly, any human being. And so in order to give in to sleep and to be willing to go to sleep, there are some safety measures that typically need to be met. Now, there have been nights where my kids might, you know, I might not be able to do these things and they might be upset, but they can still fall asleep eventually. But I'm talking about for the ideal type of wind down where they easily go to bed and fall asleep easily and at a good time and have a quality sleep. Um, yeah, I noticed that there was this pattern there. And so I started to zoom out and think about this more. And what I realized is that my nervous system and my children's nervous system were sort of synced. So another example of this is recently we were traveling in the airport. We used to live in Costa Rica. We lived there for seven months and then we moved back and flew back internationally to here in Arizona and, um, getting ready to go, as you can imagine, an international trip with a family of five plus a dog, it was a lot of work and it would be one thing if I had my full executive functioning when I say executive functioning, what I mean is running on time, organizing, planning ahead, basically all of the work that your prefrontal adult cortex does, your prefrontal cortex of your brain. Um, I was in a bit of a depression around the time that we were moving and I was quite dysregulated and my children were too. And it was excruciating for all of us. And it was so interesting I couldn't really articulate this to you at the time, but as I look at my children's behaviors and patterns of behavior that they developed and their interactions with each other during my depression time, and then as I came out of depression, how those have changed for them, it is night and day in general on a whole. And so I've Googled this term and you can look it up, nervous system sinking. And what science has sort of proven is that you and your child, and even you and your, especially a romantic partner, um, your brains actually sync and get on the same wavelength. So when people are like, oh, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. Like it actually happens. And, um, depending on the safety in the relationship and the history, it can happen quite quickly and quite often. And it's really, really cool. And so if you think about the brain as part of the nervous system, and, uh, and so, yeah, there's this nervous system sinking. So I want to go through what is the nervous system? I think that's important to really just kind of quickly go over. What does it mean to be dysregulated? And I want to kind of paint that picture for you so that you can be like, okay, am I dysregulated? I want to help you figure out if you might be, um, probably are, I'm going to be honest, like most, most of us are dysregulated to different degrees. So remember, it's not like you either are or you're not it's much more of like a sliding spectrum of dysregulation versus regulation. So we'll talk about what does it mean to have a nervous system that's dysregulated to some degree? What does it mean to be regulated and to get re-regulated? And we'll go from there. Okay. Because remember as a mom, you set the tone in your home for the nervous system of those people, little people and other big people in your family that you influence. And I don't say that to put pressure on you. And yet I don't want to burst your bubble, but we are leading. We're leading ourselves first and then our families, right? Just like I say in the intro to this podcast. 
So if you're going to be leading, might as well figure out, are you creating you know, a, a lead that you really want people to be following? And if not, now is the time. The sooner, the better to go through your own trauma and your nervous system and the healing that needs to be addressed there for the sake of your lineage, your next generation. Okay. So what is the nervous system? Um, the nervous system is your brain. And then I just call it like a bundle of nerves, but it's basically responsible for a lot of our automatic things like breathing and stuff like that. But it's also where trauma is stored. Okay. And so one of the things your nervous system does is it communicates with electric pulses to all the major organs in your body. And when you are dysregulated or when you're going through something very intensely emotional, um, it it sometimes, uh, can push your nervous system to a state of overload. And that's often when your nervous system will just store and sort of grab and hold on to some of that intensity of emotion and bring it up later. And when it comes up later, that's when we call that trauma. Okay. So when typically when we hear the word trauma, we think of events. That's not correct. Trauma is not found in events like earthquakes or, you know, natural disasters or or shootings or anything like that. Trauma is not found in events. Trauma is found in the nervous system. I actually learned um, just this last week that the nervous system of a child who has gone through, like grown up in a war-torn country with bombs going off all the time and, you know, never knowing if your house is next and um, other armies occupying your land, that trauma and that nervous system dysregulation and, and everything is just the same on a nervous system level in your body as a child who grew up in a household with constant um, threatening or abuse or even just neglect, emotional neglect and poor parenting and nobody to advocate for you, to protect you, to teach you how to regulate yourself. So we all carry trauma in our nervous systems, just just part of the human experience, but we're just learning collectively what this is and how to deal with it. So that's the nervous system and trauma. Now, what does it look like to be dysregulated? I want to paint this picture for you, and I'm going to be sharing this from my basically my own experience as well as those of my clients. So some typical signals of dysregulation, and again, remember that it's a spectrum, is mood swings so um, and just moodiness. Also, just a general tone of like, hi, how are you? Like just sort of not that alive, <laughs> ultimately. Um, but that might be, for some of us, that's really all we know, especially if you had lots of kids really fast. Um and, and, uh, yeah, it, it, some of us, like, we don't even realize how not peppy we are. We've never even had a chance to be differently, or it's been a long time since we have, maybe the last time we were is before we got married or back in our single girl maiden days. So, uh, another signal of dysregulation is depressiveness. So it's kind of what I was just talking about, but it can be days, weeks, months, or hours a day, um, numbness and really a disconnect with your body. That's a huge sign. And I would say 99% of my clients come in to me specifically to work on that because one of the things that I'm really good at is knowing how to teach someone to reconnect with their body because I was, they call it like depersonalization and it's a, it's part of a trauma response. It can be really interesting, but you basically start to disconnect with your body and the more trauma that you have in your body, the more that you will sort of cut off from your body in order to try to stay safe. And the more locked in your head you will become. Um, by the way, if you want like a full rundown of postpartum depression and anxiety symptoms, I have a freebie. It's at lizzielangston.com forward slash freebie, F R E E B I E. And it's a PDF and it's got anxiety and depression symptoms, but really specific to help you prepare for a chat with a provider or to just help you gauge where you're at on that spectrum. So just go to lizzielangston.com forward slash freebie to grab that today so you can have it. 
Um, yeah, a boredom and a lack of purpose in your motherhood can also be a signal that you've got some trauma that you're working with. Anxiety, if I haven't already said that, is definitely, um, uh, especially if it really doesn't make logical sense. You know, there's some anxiety that's like, okay, I'm a first time mom and I'm nervous about my kid being able to sleep well tonight. But then there's like anxiety that's vague and very vivid and very much taking over your body and it's very blindsiding. So that's typically dysregulation of the nervous system due to trauma um, from before in the past. Now I want to make a brief little statement here to let you know and give you some hope, okay? If you're identifying with some of these, I want you to know something that I believe, which is that I believe that when trauma comes up, it's because you're more grounded than you've ever been. And trauma only comes up, the subconscious only releases trauma when we're ready and able to deal with it. Whether that means we can do it on our own or whether our subconscious has come into contact with a provider or somebody in the world that helps us feel safer than we can maybe create for ourselves. This just happened to me today, you guys. I met with, her name is Lara Layla. And she's a good friend that I just made recently. And I just met her through like a healing circle I'm a part of. And I reached out to her privately and said, Hey, I want to meet with you. Could we, could we just, you know, do a zoom call? I don't even know what for yet. I mean, I thought, you know, I think I want to invite her to be on the, the podcast, but beyond that, I didn't know when I met with her, my nervous system started pouring out the things. And I knew she was my chosen one. She was my nervous systems provider. She was going to be the one to protect me and and create safety for me. That is what it should feel like, by the way, is when you feel safe with someone, like really safe, you are like a blubbering mess and you, you feel like shocked by your own, your, your floodgates just get opened. I have had the privilege of being on so many consults with women who start crying and they don't know why, and they can't stop. And it's awesome. (laughs) I freaking love it. It's such a compliment from their subconscious to my subconscious. It's like when someone burps after they eat your food, like it's just like, wow, you know? (laughs) Okay. I don't know that I always, if my kids burp, I'm like, excuse me, (laughs) but, but they say the saying goes like a belch is, is maybe a compliment to the chef or something, or maybe silence while people are eating a little less gross. Maybe silence is like, okay, everybody loves it. It's the same thing. When women cry on consults with me, it is a compliment to me that I am safe for them. I'm a safe place for them. So if that's you sometimes crying on a dime, check yourself. You could either be in like a a fawning trauma response with someone you don't feel safe with, or you could be um, feeling very safe for the first time. All right. Um, So basically if you're not aligned with your authentic full life, full of life version of yourself, um, that can be dysregulation. Um, now in our late twenties and early thirties, or even our early twenties, depending on when you settle down and start to have kids, you are separating gradually from your family of origin. You're separating from your childhood trauma and you're coming into your adult self and a more authentic version of yourself. That's the idea anyway. Not everybody does this work. Okay. But here in my community, that's what we're after. And so, um, yeah, those are the signs of dysregulation. And then what is regulating? What does it look like to be regulated in your nervous system? Um, so my kids know that I'm regulated. I mean, they don't know on a conscious level, they're eight, six, and four, but on a subconscious level, their nervous systems are happiest when mama is dancing singing, making jokes, wrestling, loving life. I'm flexible. I, I'm not like a yes to everything, but I am also not resistant to requests. Um, and if I do say no, it's from like a very clear boundary, healthy place. Um, I'm clear. I'm decisive. I have good executive functioning. I can get our family dressed and together pretty much on time to places. Um, I have a sense of purpose, like a huge sense of purpose to where they might even be like, mom, like I noticed, you know, they might say things about like, oh, you go and coach people. And I'm not like, yeah, I feel so bad. I'm not like torn. I'm like, yes, I love coaching and I love you. And it's so all amazing. I'm very abundant. Um, I share openly with other friends and I have really good friendships. I'm emotionally available, but I also have healthy boundaries. Okay. So those are some 
some, what it looks like to be regulated. Now, as you think about dysregulated and regulated, which one do you identify with more? Which set of adjectives, if you will? I want you to know that wherever you're at on that spectrum, I honor you. I see you. And I probably was you (laughs) and am you sometimes where you are. I mean, okay. So this is not like a diagnosis. This is just giving you an idea of where your nervous system is at and where, what you can expect as far as the sinking with your family. If you feel like in your motherhood and with your children, there is a lot more fighting than other families or a lot more aggression or on the opposite, if your child is, you know, nonverbal or really withdrawn, what I'm not saying is that that's your fault. What I am saying is that it could be your children's nervous system reflecting the state of yours and or your partner's. And so if your children are exhibiting, and also pets, by the way, I was listening to a holistic um, veterinarian. She's in another healing circle I'm in. (laughs) I'm in some really cool groups of women. It's pretty cool. And she was talking about how she had a dog die and and then she had two other dogs or maybe just one other dog. But anyway like her, she's a vet, right? And so she loves dogs. And so when her dog died, she and her daughter were super sad about it and just like grief struck the household so hard. And her dog developed like a respiratory infection and was coughing up stuff. And she, as a, like a holistic veterinarian, she intuitively knew that grief is stored in the lungs. And so she could see that her dog, her best guess after evaluating her, her living dog was that Her dog was not only grieving for the loss of the other dog, but it was holding the grief of the women in the household and the people in the household. And so um, she took necessary steps to work herself through her grief and her daughter and then her dog as well. And the sickness went away in her dog, of course, right? So all that to say, it's truly amazing and fascinating, but biologically speaking, we connect. We are interconnected. We live in a world that wants to believe for whatever its own purposes are in a very ego driven way that we are not connected and that you can walk by somebody on the street and you don't, you know, there's no connection. Just stay in my lane. You stay in yours. There's this sort of illusion of inter of not of disconnection, but disconnection is an illusion. Okay. And it breeds unwellness, mental health speaking, and it breeds disease and sickness. We are interconnected. We're meant to be interconnected and our nervous systems connect with one another. If your children get sick a lot or they've gone through a phase recently or whenever where they've been sick often, this is something you want to look into because just like the dog in this example I just shared was subconsciously taking on the grief of his owners, our children's subconscious mind will try and help us by taking on what's ours. If we're not conscious of what we're going through and what's beyond the surface for us, that's something that can happen. Now be careful with this because just because I tell you this, I don't want you to start feeling guilty. It's not like you're doing it on purpose. Okay. And that's my dog moving on the couch as he looks at the birds out the window. And (laughs) it is something to consider, right? It's just one more reason to come do the work of understanding what's going on for you subconsciously, what your energy, what are you processing subconsciously that your nervous system has stuffed down below (laughs) that you could take a look at and free yourself of, and even free the energetic and the nervous systems of your collective household. Yeah. So that's basically it for today. I just wanted to introduce you to this idea that nervous systems actually do and can sync starting with the brain and then moving down into even how our organs are working and functioning and the way we process emotion. I believe that no matter how much trauma you have stored in your nervous system, that it makes a difference to your children and in your home when you approach your own healing. I believe that most women, a lot of women try to burn themselves out, becoming better parents than they had 
But when you do that without addressing your own nervous system trauma, what happens is a lot of hustle and then discouragement and then despair. And I'm not saying that change isn't possible without going to your nervous system. Um, I can't really say that, but what I can say is that when your body's full of trauma, you don't have a lot of emotional availability. And what can happen is you can get really avoidant, um, in, in some ways that you'd really love to grow, but you, to self-protect, you sort of avoid approaching those things. Maybe it's better parenting. Maybe it's starting a side hustle or a business you've wanted to start or any creative outlet. You can actually put those off and leave yourself in a very, um, sort of low vibrational, almost too empty state of living simply because you're trying to self-protect because on a subconscious deep level, you sense that you're not able to do those things. Not because you don't want to, not because you're not worthy of it, not because some part of you isn't capable to do them because those are all true, but your own trauma is holding you back. Join us. Join us now. If you go to lizzielangston.com forward slash program, you can enroll with me for 12 weeks. We go through my postpartum anxiety course. It addresses postpartum anxiety and connecting your mind to your body again. It teaches you how to recognize trauma, how to lessen and decrease your symptoms symptoms of anxiety and depression postpartum. And then in the live coaching calls, we also delve into the mother wound and sort of matriarchal patterns of abuse and patriarchy in our families and just so much more. It's really a beautiful program. And then with this cohort that I have currently, I've actually opened up access to my private podcast, which is called Healing in Home and also meditations that are specific to postpartum anxiety and depression. And it's not yoga. I call it dedicated body time. Although I am getting yoga certified this summer. Um, you have those videos as well and you get access to all the call replays during the whole program as well as the online course the whole time, which has like 14 videos, I want to say, and they're each anywhere from 10 to 14 minutes long. So it's value packed. The investment is 1800. You can make $600 monthly payments, or you can pay it up front. And if you've already purchased my course, I subtract the price that you've used to purchase my course from the enrollment in my program. So you won't be paying for it twice. I love this work. I love women. I love you guys. I'm so grateful that you're here. Go to lizzielangston.com forward slash program. If you want to join us for this next cohort of group coaching, get on the wait list. You'll hear about it as soon as it's open. I'll get you in because you deserve a life completely free in your body, connected to your body connected to your kids because every inch of trauma you address and let go of and heal and release opens up something in your body. I just felt this today, you guys, I was talking with my provider and as we did some deep somatic, which means nervous system work, I felt more of my body be my own and I felt more capacity and availability and resilience and potential and possibility for connection I, I swear to you, like the more trauma work you do in releasing it properly with tenderness and kindness towards yourself at your own pace and gentleness, the more you start to magnetize women and community in your life. So let my community be the first step. Go to lizzielangston.com forward slash program and get learning about your trauma today. We'll talk to you soon. This is me interrupting our typical outro to let you know that I have a 12 week program for postpartum women. It's called better than normal again, 12 weeks to thriving postpartum and beyond. I'm so excited about it. It's opening for enrollment soon register and get on the wait list so that you won't miss it. When we open at lizzielangston.com forward slash program, that's lizzielangston.com forward slash program. And you will be notified when the 12 week program is open for enrollment. It's happening soon. Mm-hmm.